This video is an introduction to the base architecture of the Flutter framework and the Dart language. But before diving into code, it's important to understand how Flutter works behind the scenes. You'll see in the video the Dart language benefits for deployment and development, the benefits of the Flutter framework to build multi-platform applications from a single code base, how widgets are used to compose the UI, and how they form the widget, element, and the render tree, the widget's lifecycle events, when to use a stateless or a stateful widget, how Flutter performance is fast and communicates via platform channels to access native platforms APIs. Flutter is Google's portable UI framework for building modern, native, and reactive applications for mobile, web, and desktop. It uses Dart, an object-oriented language that compiles to native ARM code and production-ready JavaScript code. It uses the Skia 2D rendering engine that works with different types of hardware and software platforms. Dart is ahead of time compiled to native code, making your Flutter application fast. Dart is also just-in-time compiled, making it fast to display your code changes, such as via Flutter Stateful Hot Reload feature. Flutter uses Dart to create your user interface, removing the need to use separate languages like Markup or Visual Designers. Flutter is decorative. In other words, Flutter builds the UI to reflect the state of the app. When the state, your data, changes, the UI is redrawn and Flutter constructs a new instance of the widget. Widgets are configured and mounted, meaning rendered, creating the widget tree and the element tree. But under the hood, the render tree, a third tree, uses the render object, which computes and implements the basic layout and pane protocols. Flutter is fast, and the rendering runs at 60 frames per second, and 120 frames per second for capable devices. Now, the higher the frames per second, the smoother the animations and transitions. Applications made in Flutter are built from a single code base, they're compiled to native ARM code, they use the GPU, and can access specific iOS and Android APIs, like your GPS location, the image library, by communicating via platform channels. You'll learn how the Flutter framework works behind the scenes. You'll see how widgets and elements are related, and you'll get an understanding of how they form the widget tree and the element tree. You'll get an introduction to stateless widget and stateful widget and their lifecycle events. You'll see how Flutter is a declarative framework builds the URI to reflect the state of the app. The Flutter UI is implemented by using widgets from a modern reactor framework. Flutter uses its own rendering engine to draw widgets. You might be asking, what's a widget? Widgets can be compared to Lego blocks. By adding blocks together, you create an object. And by adding different kinds of blocks, you can alter the look and behavior of the object. Widgets are the building blocks of a Flutter app and each widget is an immutable declaration of the user interface. Widgets are the configuration, the instructions, for different parts of the UI. Placing the widgets together creates the widget tree. Example, an architect draws a blueprint of a house. Objects like the walls, windows, doors, and the house are the widgets, and all of them work together to create the house in our case, the application. In programming, you have different life cycle events that usually happen in a linear mode, one after another as each stage is completed. In this section, you'll learn the widget life cycle events and their purpose. To build the UI, you use two main types of widgets, stateless widget and stateful widget. A stateless widget is used when the values, the state, do not change. And the stateful widget is used when the values, the state, change. 
Each stateless or stateful widget is a build method with a build context that handles the location of the widget in the widget tree. The build context objects are actually element objects, an instantiation of the widget at a location in the tree. The stateless widget is built based on its own configuration and does not change dynamically. For example, the screen displays an image with a description and will not change. The stateless widget is declared with one class. The build, the UI portions method of the stateless widget, can be called from three different scenarios. The first time the widget is created, when the widget's parent changes, and when an inherited widget has changed. The following sample code shows a stateless widget based structure in the widget's lifecycle. You create one class that extends the stateless widget and contains the build method to compose the UI. A stateful widget is built based on its own configuration but can change dynamically. For example, the screen displays an image with a description, but the values can change based on the user's interaction, like choosing a different image or description. This type of widget has a mutable state that can change over time. The stateful widget is declared with two classes, the stateful widget class and the state class. The stateful widget class is rebuilt when the widget's configuration changes, but the state class can persist, enhancing performance. For example, when the state changes, the widget is rebuilt. If the stateful widget is removed from the tree and then inserted back into the tree sometime in the future, a new state object is created. You call the setState method to notify the framework that this object has changes, and the widget builds method is called. Actually, it's scheduled. You would set the new state values inside the setState method. The following example shows a stateful widget base structure in the widget's lifecycle. You have two classes: the journal edit class that extends a stateful widget and the journal edit state that extends the state class.